Hello. Uh, what I thought I'd do in today's tutorial is do a little bit on quest variables and how you define a quest variable and how you um, how you change it in uh, in scripting. So I'm going to start by creating my quest. So I'll right click new and give it a unique ID. I'll just call it set and quest and I'll give it a priority 45 and all the rest of this is fine. So okay. And now I'm going to also create an NPC because I'm going to use him to have dialogue with and change the variable through his dialogue. So I'm going to, I'll create a unique voice type for him first of all. Right click new and ID, I'll just call it said and voice. And create a new NPC, right click new. I'll just leave everything at the default for the purpose of this tutorial. Seddon NPC name Seddon four four nine four short name Seddon and I'm going to skip over to his traits and I'm going to give him a unique voice type over here so he won't say any of the default dialogue. And now we're going to go over to our quest and this is where we're going to do some of the new stuff. So I'm just going to open my quest here and once we've opened the quest we're going to go to scripts and we're going to create a new script. So we're going to add a script and this will take us a few seconds to load and we're going to do a new script. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a name Seddon script and I'm going to check this box conditional and the reason I'm checking this conditional bo script box is because we want our um, our script to contain conditional variables that can be set elsewhere in the thing. So I'm going to set conditional there and hit OK. Oh, script already exists. Does it? OK, I called it said and shoot script. <clears throat> apparently that other script already existed. And I'm just going to hit cancel. So now we're going to create our variables. We're going to right click edit source and we'll see this will already be generated for us script name then the name of our script and you don't need to worry about this extends quest is done by default but so you just we don't need to consider that and conditional which is that little box we checked earlier because that extends quest means because quest is a, a default script that already exists <clears throat> so like that. and this just means that it this basically tells the game that this uses some aspect of that uh, script quest but we don't need to worry about that for purposes of this tutorial so we're now going to create our variable and whereas in the old fallouts all you would have to do is write short and then the name of your variable in this it's totally different so we're going to do write int first and this tells us that our variable is an integer so it's a whole number int property so this is a property which is an integer so it's a property that has a numerical value so now we're going to give it a name and it's going to be seddon variable and now we're going to put auto which will allow us to use it uh, outside of the script and conditional again which will uh, means that well it's a conditional variable we can change it and reference it in other things and if we hit control s now that's saved and we can close it and when we double click now this will show up as being an integer at default zero now we can edit the value if we want to have it start off at something else if you want to have it start off at um at one or at two or any value but I'm going to leave it at zero and so now I'm going to set up some dialogue so that we can use the dialogue to change the variable so I'm going to head over to quest aliases and I'm going to right click and create a new reference alias so those of you that have done the dialogue tutorial will already know what I'm doing here I'm creating a unique actor and I'm going to oh I've remembered that uh, I forgot to actually make my NPC unique so those of you that have already I'll do that really quickly. Those of you who have already done the dialogue tutorial will know how to do this, but I'm just double clicking. Double clicking my NPC. And I forgot to press unique there, which will allow me to select him in the uh, unique actor alias. So go back to character quest, open this up, right click new reference alias. And we're going to give it a name. I'll just call it said an NPC and unique actor and we're going to track down said an NPC okay okay 
and so now we are going to set up our scenes. So I'm going to right click create a new scene, just call it Seddon Scene, okay. And we're going to click player dialog. We have to actually click on the scene, and then we click player dialog, and this shows up. So I'm going to right click new actor, select the alias we made before, okay. So make a little greeting for him. Uh, we'll give it a new ID, Seddon Quest greeting. And we're going to say, hello, I'm here to set a variable, and I'm just going to right click and add a new condition, a get his ID condition for the NPC we made earlier, which was set an NPC. There he is. Okay. Okay. So that will just block anyone else from saying the, uh, the thing, we don't want that because we don't want anyone else to say his line. So now we're going to right click, new action, and when, sorry, new phase end. And I'm just going to name it variable set phase. Because I mean, I'm imagining that for the purposes of my tutorial, I'm just going to do some really simple dialogue where you'll speak to the player, ask the MP you'll speak to the NPC, you'll ask the NPC to set the variable to a value, and he'll do it. But I imagine that you have something else in mind for your mod if you're doing this. So we're just going to right click new action, and we're going to set up the player dialogue. I'm just going to hit OK so I get this menu up. So I'm going to say, set the variable to 1, please, and we double click response text, and we're just going to have the same thing. So that's what the player will say, and now I'm going to have the NPC say, I'll do that now, and now this is the part where we... Uh, set up changing the variable to a value. So I'm going to hit run fragment and now where it says KYM quest we get a click that and said in tutorial script has come up. So this is now setting this KMY quest value to said in tutorial script and all we have to do here is type KMY quest dot and now this is the name of the variable we, des we uh, defined earlier said in variable a single equal sign and one. And when we compile, nothing happens. That means it was successful. And so now I'm going to ask him to set the variable to two. Not going to say please this time. Set the variable to two. To two. And this is. Just, and then I'm just going to have him say. I'll do that now, and we're going to run fragment for KMY quest. We're going to select the script we made before, and just put KMY quest uh, dot the name of our variable, which was sedan variable equals two. Compile. Now, you'll probably be thinking, you know, what's the point of any of this? And really, in terms of this tutorial, there's no point. But I'm just doing it to demonstrate how the process works. So to demonstrate it working, when I go in game, I'm going to su get set up a response, and I'm going to have what does the variable equal? What does the variable? Jesus Christ, I can't I can't type at all. Equal. I always try and type too fast and type totally the wrong thing. And then, so now we're going to create two different responses to this one. And this will be, actually we'll make three different responses because the variable will start off at zero. So the very first one I'm going to say, the variable is zero. And this is the default value of a variable, so I'm going to include this. I mean, if you want, you can set it to one by default, as I demonstrated, as I showed you earlier, but mine's starting at zero, so I'm going to have zero. So now we're going to put a condition on, so I'm going to right click new, and we're going to look for get vm quest variable and it'll default to the quest that we're in at the moment and if we click here this should come up this little square of dots said and variable underscore var it's assume it's short for variable okay and for that value it has to equal zero so i'm just going to right click and copy the condition now for sake of speed hit okay and now underneath where i've done the variable is zero i'm going to right click new and the variable is 1 
and I'm going to just paste in that condition and then change the equals value to say 1. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. And then underneath again, if we can get underneath, I mean, it doesn't really matter what order these appear in anyway, so if it pushes itself up above, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's pushed itself up above, but it doesn't matter. The variable is 2, and I'm going to paste in my condition from earlier, and I'm going to change the value now to 2. Now, there's one other thing that you can do with variables. We can set, set it to incrementally increase. So if we go to our other response, I'm going to say raise the variable by 1, please. And then raise the variable by 1, please. And so this is useful if you want to, you know, keep a count of something, like a mod I'm making at the moment. Every time you say something mean to the character, he gets an extra annoyed point, like a ver my variable is called annoyed point, and that will inc increase by an increment of one. And then that will later affect how he talks to you in the mod, whether like, he hates you because you've been a dick to him all the time. So now we're going to run our fragment, and we're going to select the KMY quest to be said in shoot script. And we're going to put KMY quest dot uh, the name of our variable which was sedden variable equals kmy quest dot sedden variable I've got to make sure I spell it right otherwise I'm going to get a put plus one and that plus can be any amount you want you could add plus a hundred if you wanted to or plus anything and I'm going to hit OK oh I shouldn't have done that in this. I accidentally did this in the player uh, section. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but for neatness sake, I want to put it into the NPC's thing. So I'm going to change that to do nothing. Apologies for that mistake. I'm going to go over here and do the, in the NPC's response. I'm going to put... Um, I'll do that now. And I'm going to put uh, run fragment KMY quest. So KMY quest dot sedden variable equals kmy quest dot sedden variable plus one compile and yep typed all that right that is done that is that done so I'm going to quickly save this then I will sort of talk through how it's all worked I'll go through how it all works once again so I created my NPC who'll do the dialogue I made him a unique actor alias I set up his I then set up our script which I just used all the default stuff to uh, name a script. Defined our, pro I made our property, which was an integer property. Named it set and variable. Made it auto and conditional so that we can um, edit it outside of a script. I think that's what auto does. And then conditional allows it to be used as a conditional variable. Just like conditional in here allows our quest to be used like as a conditional quest script, which is how we were able to select it. Um, because if you don't put those two conditional things in, you won't be able to select it out of the um, out of the get VM quest variable thing that we did earlier. And then in our scenes, I've got the set variable to one, please. And in the response, we've got KMY quest, but we'll raise it by one. In this one, KM, KMY quest, it changes it to two. And in this, uh, we've dem I've demonstrated how to raise it by an individual amount rather than to set it to a value a value. So if I kept on and on saying this, if I said if I said this the first time when KMY quest dot set variable equals zero, it would be set to one. But if I then said it again because KMY quest equals one already, it would be set to two because I've set it to its already existing value plus one. And then its its value will then determine which of these three are chosen based on the get VM quest variable value that I put in there. So I'm now going to nip into the game and demonstrate it, unless I made a mistake, in which case I'll be back uh, in a second. Alright, so I'm in the game world. Uh, during the tutorial I did forget to put my NPC into the world, but I just, I've done it on off camera and he's over there. Because I didn't feel like putting an NPC in the world was critical to the tutorial, it's just showing you how to work uh, variables. So now here I'm here to set a variable. I also forgot to loop the conversation, so he's going to boot me out of the conversation when I finished. So if I ask him what the variable equals here, he's going to say zero, and then boot me out of a conversation because I didn't make it loop, but it doesn't matter. The variable is zero. So now I'm going <coughs> to speak to him again. If I'd made the conversation loop, we could have done this a lot faster. 
Um, so now I'm going to ask him to raise the variable by one. And so he'll say, I'll do that now. And then we, when we speak to him again. Hi. I should really change the save that I use so there's not always a fight going on when I do these uh, videos. Um, so now if we ask him what the variable equals now, he should say that it equals 1. The variable is 1. There we go. And now we're going to ask him to increase it again by an in increment of 1. Raise the variable by 1, please. So now we'll speak to him again, ask him what the variable equals, and he'll tell us that it equals 2, because we've increased it by 1 when previously it was 1. Hey there. Um, what does the variable equal? The variable is 2. Now, if I were to increase it again by 1, it would increase it to 3. <coughs> but I, ha I haven't made enough dialogue options for that to happen, so I'm just going to have him reset it back to 1 by saying, um, set the variable to 1, please. But it is also possible to decrease by increments of 1 if you change the plus that I put in the tutorial <coughs> to a minus. But obviously, there aren't enough dialogue lines for me to demonstrate him doing that entirely. So now, he should be, I set the variable to 1, so if I ask him what the variable equals, he'll say 1. Yep, there we go. And I'll f to finally demonstrate it working <coughs> with the other one, I'll ask him to set the variable to 2, then ask him what the variable equals. Oh, I ask him what the variable equals. Oh, I'll see if I can just get myself out of this conversation. I got distracted by the guy running up against the fence in the background, and so I pressed the wrong key. Set the variable to 2. I'll do that now. Excuse me. Oh, he's gone, the fence guy. Wonder did he just like teleport away? Because to catch up with the people he was with. And what does the variable equal? He should say two. Yeah, he said two. So that's all working fine. Uh, hopefully that tutorial was clear. I mean, I wanted to do something nice and simple that I knew would definitely work because I've had quite a stressful day with the creation kit. And I, even when I started this tutorial, I was a little bit stressed, so I hope that it uh, didn't come through too much, and I hope that it was uh, it was clear and that you've understood how um, to set, to define and then set a quest variable through dialogue. Maybe I'll do another one to show how to set it through quest stages, but it isn't desperately difficult. So yeah, um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.